The science behind the chemical reactions you see in a kitchen or cooking are linked to physical changes that you can see at the macroscopic level and chemical changes that you cannot see at the microscopic or submicroscopic level. So one thing that chemical reactions have in common, whether in the lab or the kitchen, is you use heat to transform. So heat is used to transform food in the kitchen, and heat very often causes physical changes. One example is melting solid ice to form liquid water, or even boiling water into steam, which is a gas. So that's a, those are physical changes where you're moving from a solid to liquid to a gas, and no bonds are broken. So liquid water simply has the molecules further apart um, when it boils into form, forming a gas. So in the liquid, the molecules have some motion and spacing, but in the gas, the molecules have a lot of motion and a lot of spacing, and that's because energy was added in the heating process. So the water molecules are not changed. That's just a physical change in the process of boiling. Now, in a chemical change, heat is used to transform food in a kitchen, so from ingredients to products, like a raw egg. So the raw egg is a clear liquid with that egg yolk that's yellow. But when you heat the raw egg, it causes a couple of things. First, the egg white that was a liquid turns to a solid. The other thing is the egg white that's clear turns to the white color, which is why it's called egg white when it's cooked. So the two things that happened were a physical change, the liquid egg white to the solid cooked egg, and then the color change, which was the clear to white. So anytime you have a color change, which we saw in double replacement reactions, precipitation reactions in particular, when there's a color change, that's evidence of a chemical reaction. So we could not see the chemical reaction, and in a chemical reaction, bonds are broken, new bonds are formed, and you get a product that wasn't there before, such as this white stuff, which is the egg white that's cooked. So specifically what happens in the cooking of an egg is that the raw egg white has proteins in it. So these are proteins that look like polymers that we've seen for synthetic polymers. You have uh, these monomers bonded together. And these are um, called folded proteins. Okay, so you can see they're kind of curled up. What happens as you heat the egg, the raw egg, is that these proteins, these curled up, these curled up molecules uncurl or they denature is the official term. So they basically uncurl and now they're unfolded and they're straight polymers. And when the heating continues, these proteins now cross-link. So they're unfolded, but now they will bond and form new bonds. So these bonds are broken and these bonds are formed. The new bonds are formed and this is your product that is different. You still have the original starting materials, but the atoms are rearranged and new bonds are formed. This actually doesn't have to happen with heat. This can work with alcohol or acid as well. As long as you break the bonds and allow for new bonds to form, you've experienced this if you've ever made ceviche, which isn't an egg, but it's raw seafood. Taking raw seafood and adding acid to it, which takes raw shrimp, adding acids from lemon juice, lime juice, orange juice, or vinegar, and cause the proteins to break apart, form new bonds, which is a product which is a cooked version, not using heat, but acid. Foods that are cooked, there's also a flavor change due to what's called the Maillard reaction. So this causes also the browning of food. Um, and in this process, in both cooking and baking, what happens is that sugars in the original ingredients and proteins also in the original ingredients end up bonding together in the final product, which result in new flavors and the browning or the brown color. So this um, Maillard reaction. This only works if the original ingredients are relatively dry without any water. So that's why it works in baking or um, boiling 
for instance, does not cause, cause this reaction. It does not cause boiling, never causes a browning of food, or in particular, these new flavors. It's also why pizza is so good, um, because of this Maillard reaction. So what happens in the reaction is that you have sugars in food, and you have proteins in food, and what happens is the sugars and the proteins, these sugars and proteins end up bonding together in this Maillard reaction, which requires heat.